Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So nobody was talking to Prashant. Is that going to be the same with me also? <laughs> we'll all talk. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so are we all ready to receive what the Lord has to say? Yes or no? Yes. Praise God. So, so, you know, when God gets ready to speak, he also expects his people also to be ready to listen, right? And not just be hearers only, but also be doers of the word. So today what we are going to learn is something that in the beginning was very, very difficult. But when I started to understand what Jesus has done for us, and how easy he has made it. And when I had to learn how to get my thinking in alignment with the word of God, everything began to remain, everything began to become super and super and super added to my natural. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all bow down and close our eyes and, and make this prayer from the bottom of our heart because God knows each one of us intimately and personally. I don't know what is in your heart. I don't know what your desires are. But God knows us. He knows our longings. He knows our desires. He knows the areas where we are struggling, before him we are completely open and today we ask our Heavenly Father, Lord you teach us the secrets of your kingdom. Lord you teach us the principles that you have put into motion and all that your Son and our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, has accomplished for us on the cross, has not gone in vain. But Lord, what Jesus has done for us, the grace that he has made available for us, helps us to know and to walk in the calling, in the destiny that you have prepared for us. So here we are, Lord, Holy Spirit, we ask you to make this teaching very, very simple and easy for us to understand. Thank you, Lord, that as you teach us, you teach us with examples, you teach us with testimonies, you teach us with your word, breaking your word and feeding us so that this word, which is the living bread, nourishes us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just as you are working with the disciples, confirming what was preached with accompanying signs and wonders, we believe, Lord, that today also you will do the same as always. We believe by faith that what we have asked for in prayer We've received it in the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, you, Thank you, Jesus. Do I have to keep this? Is it okay if I move this? Or if I can come in the front? Is that okay? Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Just bring that chair here. Yeah, that's it. Hallelujah. So, how many of you are ready to walk in the supernatural? Good to see some hands. No, not ready? <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, can someone read from the book of Romans chapter 4? Where are my readers today? Blossom is not there. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Can someone read quickly? Romans 4.17. As it is written, I have made thee, have made thee a father of many nations. I have made thee or I will make thee. I have made thee. I have made thee. Already done. Already done. I have made thee what? A father of many nations. The father of many nations. Many nations. Okay. Before him. Before him. Whom he believed. Whom he believed. Even God. Even God. Who quickeneth the dead. And calleth those things. And calls those things. And calleth those things. Which be not as though they were. And calls those things. Which be not. As though. They were. Are there some things in your life. Which is not and you want it to be. Are there some things. Okay, read that scripture once again and go very slow. Once again. As it is written, I have made thee father of many nations before him whom he believed. Who is this he? Who is this promise given to? Who is this promise given to? To Abraham. Now, now you remember Abraham was a very old man. Right? Sarah, his wife, was also very old. Were they past the age of bearing children? Yes. Right? Now, at the age of 99, can you expect anyone to conceive? To become a father or a mother? Is it a, is it, is it a possible situation in the natural realm? It's not a possible situation. Now, other sometimes we receive some report from the doctor where the doctor says, this is the last word. You just have few moments, you just have few months, and you are already given a report. In the natural, not possible. But here is a situation, Abraham, just like us, human, he is in a situation where he has no hope. And here is a promise given to Abraham. God is saying, I will not make you, but I have made you the father of many nations. Now he has passed the age of bearing children. He has no child of his own. And here is God telling him, I have made you the father of many nations. Can he see it with his eyes? Can he see it? No. Cannot see it, but he believes. Okay. Can you see I'm holding a mic? Yes. Right? If I drop this mic, where will it go? If I drop, will it go down? Or if you drop, it will go down? If I drop, it will float. If I drop, it will float. What makes you so sure that it will not float? Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> there is a law of gravity. There is a law of gravity. Can you see it? But do you believe it? Why do you believe it? Because, because the evidence shows that if I drop something, regardless of who I am, whether I am a believer or a non-believer, whether I am a man or a woman, whether I am a child or an adult, whether I am from India or from America, makes no difference. Anyone who comes under this law the result for that person is going to be the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, you, Thank you, Jesus. Are there any people over here who has been experiencing any kind of pain and sickness in their body? 
ah okay i need you sister to pay very close attention to what we are learning hallelujah the situation the pain that you have what pain do you have you have total body pain hallelujah come here come here come here. i want you to sit here okay on that chair and pay very close attention to what we are learning okay thank you jesus okay go ahead aunty alice can you read that he believed uh, from the beginning as it is written as it is written i have made thee a father of many nations a father of many nation before him before him whom he believed, whom he believed, believed even god even god who quickens the dead who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not, which be not as, though as though they were the healing is not there but god calls the healing as if it is there please remember every word of god is his law just as how we are here in this physical realm all of us can see each other right but if god has to actually open our spiritual eyes we will be able to see there are more than what you see present over here again we as humans we can only connect with the physical realm using our senses by what i can see by what i can hear by what i can touch and by what i can feel hallelujah so god when he says something he has to abide by it when god speaks something he cannot change his word because if god changes his word he becomes a liar there are many a times we say something to one another we give words to one another but we don't keep it but god is not man so just as how you see in this physical realm there is a law called gravity which is at operation which is at work right now that's why we are all sitting here otherwise we would all be floating so anyone who comes under that law the result for that person is the same Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. So regardless of who you are, what the word says and if you believe it, the result is the same. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, next verse. Who against hope? Who against hope? Against hope believed in hope. Who against hope believed in hope? No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. There is a promise given to Abraham that God is telling him He has made him the father of many nations. And the next verse says that Abraham believed in a hope that was against his natural hope. Uh, say, read that again. Who believed hope? Uh, once again. Who against hope? Who? against hope believed in hope there seems to be two hopes over here one is against abraham is saying abraham believed against the natural hope and he believed in the hope that god gave him there are many a times we receive hope from the natural by what i can see If my report card shows me pass marks I believe I have passed but if my report card shows me red marks I have 
failed so which hope do i latch on to every day of my life do i latch on to the hope that the world promises me or do i latch on to the hope that god's word gives me you know we start with the hope that god has given but end up in the hope that the world is giving praise the lord, praise the lord. thank you jesus thank you jesus. you've been having pain in your body did you go to the doctor you tried medicines you took medicine it helped you for some time and then again it came back again right hallelujah now when it came back again did you believe you're healed or did you believe that the pain is still there not completely healed hallelujah abraham here believes on the hope that god is giving him please understand for any christian a person who believes in jesus that person's calling is to walk in the supernatural a person who believes in jesus a person who is baptized and filled with the holy ghost that person's person has a birthright to walk in the supernatural not in the natural if a person who believes in jesus walks in the natural then there is no difference between a person who believes and a person who doesn't believe i all understanding yes. thank you jesus yes. can we can we if we look at our life can we say that our lives is always on the supernatural or do we have ups and downs sometimes natural sometimes supernatural there is no consistency remember a believer can never walk in the supernatural without the word of god a believer can never walk in the supernatural without the word of god so if you are a person who is far away from the word please don't expect to walk in the supernatural if a person jumps from the 10th floor and says the law of gravity is not going to have an effect on me i'm going to jump and god will bring his angels and he's going to protect me it's a foolish thinking god has given you understanding of the law of gravity that is at work and he tells you that if you have to abide by that law you will be safe but if you go against it you are going to hurt yourself so for me as a believer the word of god becomes the surety the word of god becomes an anchor on which i walk in the supernatural hallelujah, hallelujah. but if i am a person who wants to fellowship with the word only when i am in a crisis you will maybe experience a supernatural encounter or a breakthrough but remember it is only because of god's mercy and that encounter is only going to be temporary after that crisis is over after you've come out of that situation there is another situation another strategy of the devil waiting to pounce on you hallelujah thank you jesus abraham believed against the hope that he had in the natural he believed in the hope that god gave him and what was it he said i have made you the father of many nations okay next that he might become the father of many nations okay next Uh, oh, for 18 can you read romans 4 18 for 18 okay 19 and being not weak in faith and being not 
weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead and being not weak in faith he considered not today from the big morning from since morning what have we been considering morning when you woke up and you know you had a day before you what have you been considering since morning okay let me ask you a simple question what is the meaning of the word consider what is the meaning of the word consider there is pin drop silence in the class okay anything to think about okay to plan to think about that means that means when you consider something you are giving your attention to it you are rolling that matter in your mind over and over and over and over again let's say you know you have to pay the rent the due date has come the salary has not come and now you have to pay to the landlord and you don't have the money do you start considering how will i pay do you start thinking in your mind should i ask somebody who should i go what should i do should i take a loan is that thinking happening so what are you doing now you are considering you are thinking about it over and over and over again when you are going to sleep you are thinking when you are waking up you are thinking i do still don't have the money i don't know when will that person come and knock at the door and say give me the rent you every single time there is this thought constantly running in your mind and your mind is giving attention to it so much so that you end up with a headache does that happen has anyone ever got worried yes this congregation doesn't get worried i'm at the wrong place do we get worried yes. when you get worried are you constantly thinking about the problem yeah now when you're constantly thinking about the problem is it bringing stress into you is it causing some physical changes to happen in your body so you are considering now are you considering the promise of god or are you considering the problem the problem now is abraham in a problem where he knows i am in an impossible situation 99 years old and no child and god is saying i have made you the father of many nations read that 19th verse what was abraham considering and oh, oh hold on hold on and being not weak in faith what is it what does it mean to be weak in faith Now what does it mean being weak in faith have you ever become weak in faith yeah doubting okay abraham did not become weak in faith the scripture also tells us how did he not become weak in faith read it further he considered not he considered not he considered not. not his own body was his natural circumstance real than the promise of god the promise of god what is given to him he has not seen the manifestation of it but him not being able to have a child for 99 years is that natural situation real to him which one will we believe where will we where will our focus be in a natural circumstances now for abraham 
is his focus on the barrenness of himself and his wife or is his focus is he considering the promise what god said and he being not weak in faith remember if you read in the you know gospel of mark jesus talks about faith okay and he says all of us have received the faith of god okay so all of us have the faith of god did god did god ever doubt no. did jesus ever doubt no. did jesus ever tell his father what you have said may not come to pass no. so that means the faith that you and i have is the same faith that jesus had okay and he said if you have faith as a mustard seed you can say to this sycamore tree you can say to this mountain how big is this mustard seed is it the tiniest of all he says he compares the faith level he says the faith to that seed he says if anyone who has faith speaks to the sycamore tree and commands it to be uprooted and to dry out he will have what he says so faith is never a problem having more faith or less faith is never a problem that is not the problem you are not weak in faith or strong in faith the real problem that stops your faith or hinders your faith from bringing into manifestation what god has said is the presence of unbelief the faith that you and i have is absolute faith that god has the only difference between god jesus operating in faith and seeing results and manifestation following but not so in our case it is because jesus operated without unbelief Jesus focused his senses not on the things that were seen but on the things that were not seen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18. Uh, can you quickly go there? And then we come back. Anyone who has it on their mobile can read it. It'll be faster. While we look not at the things which are seen, seen but at the things but at the things which are not seen which are not seen for the things which are seen for the things which are seen, seen are temporal are temporary but the things which are not seen but the things which are not seen are eternal he says while we look not at the things which are seen Now did Jesus teach his disciples? Yes, he taught his disciples, right? And he taught his disciples he he and and he did all those miracles in the in front of them. Remember the multiplication of the bread? He fed 5000 people. The multiplication of the fish and loaves, the calming of the storm, all of this did it happen before the disciples? Were they eyewitness to it? was jesus also man yes. but was he operating in the supernatural or in the natural supernatural. jesus now you may say he is god so he operated in the supernatural other than jesus there were also there was also a person who walked on the water peter just like us so did peter defy the law of gravity when he saw jesus coming at the third hour and he says uh, he the, the word of god says that they were afraid and peter goes on to tell jesus lord if it's really you bid me to come and what did jesus say no no stay there this is only my job only i can walk what did what did jesus say come did peter receive that word and take the step out of the boat on the water yes. my question today 
to all of us is how many of us are stepping out of the boat at the word of god hallelujah remember it is not the problem of your faith it is not it is not that you have weak faith if things are not manifesting if the healing is not coming if i'm still a prisoner of my addictions if i'm still struggling to study if i'm still stuck in some kind of problem it is not because i have less faith or weak faith it is because the presence of unbelief is so strong that it has stopped it has hindered my faith from doing what the faith is supposed to do now if unbelief is such a big problem then i need to know how does this unbelief come and how can i stop it yes see you know you and i we have a real enemy you and i we have a real enemy we can't see him we can't feel him but the evidence of things being lost in our lives is the evidence that there has been theft happening if you go out sometime if, if you leave your house and you go on a vacation and you come back and you see things are missing from your house do you need anyone to come and prove to you that there has been a theft do you are you going to wait and see oh but i didn't see the thief come in i didn't see it so i don't think there has been a theft but there are precious things from your house that has that has gone missing is that the evidence that there has been an invasion in the same way if my joy is missing if my peace is missing if my health is missing if my blessings are missing in my life that means there has been a theft happening and our enemies our enemy can't be seen with our physical eyes but he surely there so when you take a step of faith you say i'm going to take the word i'm going to meditate on the word i'm going to re rely on this word and come what may i'm committed to stand and abide by this word do you think your enemy is going to sit quietly is he going to come you know the word says that wherever the word of god is preached satan comes quickly and how will the enemy bring unbelief to you he says while we look not at the things which we see but we are supposed to look at the things which are unseen now how do i look at the things which are unseen did you all see the mirror in the morning before coming did you all make some adjustments did you all see how many of you saw your face all of you saw your face big liars you all you all saw your face in the mirror did you see your face or did you see the reflection of your face there is nobody on this planet who has seen their face ever unless your eyes popped out turned around looked at you again has that happened what you saw in the mirror was not your real face you never saw it with your actual eyes but what you saw was the reflection of your image of your face and you believed that mirror did you not believe it you believed that natural mirror and you took corresponding action to make the adjustments in your face in the same way the word of god is a spiritual mirror that shows us things which cannot be seen things which cannot be felt with my senses i am following 
Now, how many times do I spend? How much time do I spend before the natural mirror? And how much time do I spend before the spiritual mirror? Hallelujah. So how am I going to see the things that are hidden? How am I going to see the things that is not visible to my natural senses? The word of God is the spiritual mirror that shows me every inheritance of mine that Jesus bought for me on the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While we look at the things that are not are we supposed to look at the things seen or unseen? Is the scene temporary or is it permanent? What you see is temporary. What the unseen is, is permanent. Can you feel the pain? Yeah, that is temporary. Can you see the healing? You can't see the healing. That is permanent according to the spiritual mirror. Now, just as how you look at the natural mirror, you believe it and you take corresponding action because you believe what you are seeing in the same way the, the, the spiritual mirror, which is the written word of God, is much more sure, much more reliable and much more permanent than the natural mirror. Yet, I have difficulty believing this word. Why I have difficulty believing this word? Because my senses take over what the word says. Because that's how we have been taught. So when the enemy comes to inject you with unbelief, how is he going to come? Can you ever do anything without first thinking about it? Did you all come today dressed up? You all came dressed up. But did you think what you had to wear? Or you just closed your eyes, opened the cupboard and whatever came in the hand you took? Did you have to screen? Did you have to think? Can we ever do anything without first thinking about it? No. Uh, just go to Genesis very quickly, chapter 3. And verse 6. But the air went up a mist from the earth. Chapter 3. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, say it again. And when? And when the woman saw... And when the woman saw... That the tree was good for food... That the tree was... Good... good for food. Now, was the garden, the entire garden given to Adam and Eve? Yes. Did God tell them, don't eat of this? Did God tell them, you can eat of any fruit, of any tree that is there in the garden except this? Right? Now, were they enjoying all the fruits and trees, everything that was there in the garden? Okay. Now what happens to the woman? And it was pleasant to the eyes. Uh, from the beginning and the woman? When the woman saw when the woman saw that the tree was good for food that it was pleasant to the eyes. Now the woman saw that the tree was pleasant to the eyes. When did she see it was pleasant to her eyes? When the serpent came. So all this while they were roaming around. Their attention never went to that. That tree. Until the serpent came and showed or brought the, her attention onto that tree. So how will the enemy cause you to operate in unbelief. He is going to bring a thought that contradicts to the word of God. The thought that contradicts to the word of God carries 
in itself a virus called unbelief the moment i touch with my thinking that is when i give attention to the word that is contradicting to the word of god and i start thinking i start considering i have opened the door for the enemy to inject that virus called unbelief and if unbelief comes in your faith stops from doing what it is supposed to do <coughs> hallelujah hallelujah nothing happens by chance nothing happens by chance any mistake any error that has happened in our life has first begun in our thinking i thought about it i considered it i dwelt on it the more i gave attention to it my mind started to become to to make a road map to reach that destination which i had perceived in my mind hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus abraham did not consider the natural hope that was there he rather considered the hope that is the promise that god was giving him and the scripture says he did not weaken in faith he did not weaken in faith so abraham was a man who operated in very very little unbelief are you understanding abraham was given a promise and god did not just leave him with that promise by when by saying i have made you the father of many nations god called him out of his tent and he showed him at night he said can you look at the stars this is how many your descendants going to be now he every time he walks out at night and he looks at the sky what is he reminded of god promised me nations i have become the father of nations now what about the daytime did god show him the sand when you're walking and you have something some small stone enter into your shoe is it comfortable to walk does that stone keep reminding you i am there you better take it out is it comfortable to walk no but is it reminding you that there is something there yes in the same way imagine how abraham was walking during the day time and the sand entering into his shoes into his uh, you know he can feel the particles and every particle that he is walking on the sand he is reminded this many descendants god has given me so day and night day and night what is abraham considering what is he considering god's promise now is it easy to consider god's promise especially when you get a bad news hallelujah i was in arunachal last week we had gone to minister to the people there the day i landed in arunachal the same night i get a call from my brother and he says mom and dad has met with an accident i have not even started the preaching next day morning i am supposed to be going and teaching them and i get this news when you get a news like this how will you feel what will you consider what is happening in the house what has happened to mom and dad and 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 not just that I, he, he told me uh, dad has injured his hip there's a bruise mom has dislocated her shoulder 
bone has come out of the socket and and so on and so forth now is there an opportunity for the enemy to inject unbelief am i supposed to be walking in the supernatural or natural natural no i'm supposed to be walking in the supernatural but do i have my senses still operating god has given me the senses not to be governed by that senses the only purpose of that senses for me to be used in this planet earth is to be able to protect myself my senses tells me when i when i touch go close to the fire it is hot move away my eye shows me that there is a train coming move away but god never created the natural five senses for us to be governed by it for us to be operating and walking on the supernatural he's given us another sense which is called as the faith sense but what we do is we try to operate in the spiritual and in the supernatural using our natural sense won't work won't work at all next time you take one potato and instead of using the knife use your finger nice slices it will come will it work am i using the right weapon spiritual problems can never be solved by carnal methods for solving spiritual problems god has given me a spiritual weapon called the sword of the spirit which is the written word of god when this written word takes on my tongue when i take this written word put it in my mouth and i speak it out in faith just as he said now this word which is the sword of the spirit goes into the spiritual destroys what the enemy has planned and purposed for me and replaces it with the word of god that is his blessing given for me are you understanding are you understanding imagine if you are in your house and and there is good food your mother has cooked good food for you and kept it in the kitchen and she's gone out somewhere and you come home and you still and you and you're waiting that the food is going to be served will the food come or do you go to the kitchen and serve it for yourself is the food ready do you have the dish do you have the spoon all you have to do is go and take it put it on your plate and bring it to your mouth nobody will do that for you god is not going to do that for you in the same way god is saying i have accomplished everything for you on the cross i have finished everything for you the blessings are given now you respond to that blessing with the faith that i have given to you using my word the moment you open your mouth and you speak that word thus this word goes into the spiritual brings that blessing and deposits deposits it in the natural which is my body and my life so when i got got the news i was i was saying praise god and I did not tell about this to anybody. That night when I got the news, I began to praise God and I said, "Lord, thank you that whichever bone is out of place, I speak to that bone, go back to its place. The hip bone, go back to the place where God has created you to be. And I thank you God that this test has turned around into a testimony thank you lord that they both are safe they both are healthy and thank you lord that they are standing to witness for your glory i said that and i went to sleep next day morning 
we went to preach i have no idea what is happening in the house now will the thought come call up home and find out what is happening call up and find out what are the doctors saying so much of thoughts are coming now the scripture says this spiritual mirror shows me in 1 peter 2:24 that the wound by the wounds that jesus suffered on his body because of that wound we are healed not going to be healed but we are healed so am i looking at my parents with my natural senses or with the spiritual sense my natural sense says call up find out now i have to go and preach one side my thought mind is saying go and find out what would be happening what do you do you want to go back do you think you should go back how can you be here when your parents are suffering over there and not one both who's going to take care of them did did god say cast your cares upon me because i care for you 1 peter 5:7 So I said Lord my parents are now in your care I cast this burden I cast this care upon you because you care for me and I am not going to take back that care from you I have left it to you you deal with it the way you want it and I know and I know for sure that my parents are in the best hands possible I don't have to be worried about them did the enemy bring the thought in my mind for unbelief yes and the same say, next day when i called them the doctor said there has to be a surgery all the more my mission has just started and the places where we are going it's it's not like the city we are in the interior we are in the jungles and when i'm going to preach when we are walking we don't know where we are walking there are insects there are bugs there are different kinds of things creeping and crawling and as as i'm preaching i get a small sting on my leg i thought maybe a mosquito i brushed it off i didn't really realize i finished we would start from 7 in the morning and finish by 7 in the evening and then i would when i would we would come back i see my leg is completely swollen and there are blood clots on my leg my pant is stained with the blood i don't know what happened but it is swollen and it is paining just second day now all these things that are happening is it bringing my attention is it causing my attention to move from the word come on how many of us when we are sick we will still get up from the bed and we will go and do what the lord has called us to do he says no by the wounds of jesus you are healed and if i believe i am healed am i going to stand there if i believe i am healed if i believe this unseen and i know the one who has promised me is not a liar because he has not only promised me with that written word he has taken an oath on it god doesn't need to take an oath on his word for god's nature is not a nature to lie but he still goes ahead and takes an oath on that promise what for he takes that oath on that promise so that you and i we don't doubt him can you see the extent to which he has gone and here we are still struggling with our senses what i see is real what i feel is real when the news came there has to be a surgery i said no surgery in the name of jesus so brother johnson was there and he looked at me and he said baba what happened i said time to glorify the lord so that's when i told
told him, this is what has happened. He said, shall I book your tickets back to go home? I said, no way. I'm not going back. I'm going to be here and I'm going to allow Jesus to serve through me because I know the love what he has shown me and now it's my time to give that same love to all those who are hurting and broken. I said no surgery required. The doctors will not, there will be no knife, there will be no needle touching her body in the name of Jesus. And I went about doing my work. Now, is my heart becoming sensitive to what his word says or is my heart becoming sensitive to what the problem says? What? The promise or the problem? There are many a times problems, persecution, trials will come and there is no escape. But the good news is God says many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivers them from some. From some. From all. all. So how do I walk in the supernatural? How was he walking in the supernatural? Uh, Just tell me when my time is up, okay? How was Abraham walking in the supernatural? Did he consider his own body which was now dead? Did he consider the body of his wife Sarah which was now dead? No. No. He did not consider the brokenness. He did not consider the deadness. He considered what? The promise. So how do I stop unbelief from coming? I stop unbelief by being extremely vigilant. What am I giving my attention to? Whatever you give your attention to, you become sensitive to that. The more you give attention to the problem, the more you give attention to the pain, you become sensitive to that pain and your heart becomes hardened to the promise. Healing is there. But you are considering on the problem. You are experiencing the pain. The healing is already present according to his written word. But I'm not able to tap into this healing because I have hardened my heart to his, to receiving his healing. And how is my heart heart hardened? By giving attention to the pain. The moment you get up from the bed and you say, by the wounds of Jesus, I'm healed. And the moment you get up, you experience some pain. Now what what comes to our mind? I'm not completely healed. Little bit is there. See, our focus is on the little bit. Because I can feel it. And that is real to me. But this word is more real. Just as how the law of gravity is real. And there is another law that supersedes the law of gravity. That's why when you are here... You are under the law of gravity. But when you get into the flight and you take off, there is another law, the law of lift, which supersedes the law of gravity. In the same way, the law of sin and death is a law that all of us were operating in. But Jesus has given us another law of life which helps us to supersede from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Abraham did not grow weak in faith. How did he grow strong? Read that. No, 
no no 20 read 20 he staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief but was strong in faith giving what how do you grow strong in faith how do you keep unbelief away from you by giving glory to god do we give glory to god before the answer to the prayer comes maybe for few days then we are back to square one when the pain comes when the problem comes again we are talking about the problem abraham staggered not at the promise through unbelief but he did what he became strong in faith that means he kept unbelief out of him by giving glory to god hallelujah, hallelujah. pain is there no yeah yeah it is there come digestion problem i put allergy food right a food allergy so after eating certain food it, the swelling increases after eat, after eating certain food the swelling increases yeah okay. pain then is also there? pain is yeah pain also increases after after some food or even the basic food like uh, like mango biscuits toast uh, like basic food also okay. uh, and some vegetables do you have any pain right now uh, no not so severe which generalized pain generalized body pain yeah generalized means totally body pain but not so severe not unbearable so that you means bear you it. can bear it yeah. uh, did you all hear that pain she can bear it. bear it can i ask you one question yeah. you will not get angry at me no no sure yeah no everyone is witnessed huh? okay let's say a robber comes into your house mm. will you tell the robber please come i'm going to give you coffee no, no. <laughs> come come <laughs> generally just come sit see everything i'll give you coffee then you can go no no will you entertain the robber no what will you do call the police no. ah what will she do call the police are you going to tolerate him even for a single moment no 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 thank god she said no hallelujah is this pain is this body the temple of god yeah temple of the holy spirit temple of the holy spirit so is a robber a thief allowed to enter into this body and rob you of your health no so are you supposed to be tolerating this pain or are you supposed to be calling the police calling the police who is the police police uh, god jesus ah hallelujah sahi number lagaya thank you jesus now now all this time all this time we believe we think if the pain is bearable it's okay but you do not realize sister we are people of authority god has given us authority and this authority that jesus has given to us is not to tolerate the works of the enemy but to take into captivity the works of the enemy yeah. praise the lord praise hallelujah. hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus okay uh, read the Uh, read read that for uh, listen very carefully yeah mm-hmm. romans 4 20 he staggered not at the promise of god he staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief through unbelief but was strong in faith but was strong, strong, strong in faith you have faith yes yes okay then giving glory to god giving glory to god okay now question see why i'm asking you so many questions and why i'm explaining because if you understand this yeah. and you answer correctly yeah. we will not even have to pray the pain will be completely gone yeah. 
it all depends on what i understand according to the word okay you have faith yes 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 faith is needed because jesus said whosoever has faith as a mustard seed can say to the mountain yes. can say to that sycamentary yes. okay he staggered not at the promise through unbelief then 20 but was strong in faith giving glory to god giving glory to god. god okay now abraham received a promise from god the promise was i have made thee the father of many nations many nations now in the same way abraham received the promise do you do you have a promise for from god about your healing yes what is the promise god jesus already took my sickness and pain on the cross and healed me completely he will heal you or he healed me. healed me completely ah healed you already yes okay now you have a promise from god not from me yes. not from her yes. but from god according to 1 peter 224 yes. by his wounds you are healed yes. you have the faith yes you have the promise yes now what is remaining speak out ah what did how did abraham inherit the promise by, by giving glory to, glory to god. god so now we are not going to ask god to heal because he his word says he is already healed yeah. okay so now whatever the generalizing pain whatever pain is there okay time for you to tell the pain that you are not my friend yeah. okay yeah. and how do you say that by giving glory to god yeah. okay close your eyes is there anyone else here who has any kind of pain anyone else you have pain in your back there's a lump fantastic come here right, right left side left side okay okay now you heard what we were learning okay praise god thank you jesus now abraham gave glory to god so are we ready to give glory to god okay can someone stand behind her please okay just close your eyes both of you and wherever you have the lump wherever you have the lump place your hand over there and say this lord jesus lord jesus i thank you i thank you that today that today i've come to understand i come to understand come on speak with authority lord i've come to understand lord i come to understand that walking in the supernatural that walking in the supernatural is my birthright is my birthright and i thank you holy spirit for speaking to me and making me get up from my chair and come here i thank you lord for this is your doing and it is absolutely marvelous in our eyes father in the name of jesus for the sacrifice that jesus went through for me on the cross by his blood i am healed i am restored i am forgiven i am sanctified i am made righteous i am delivered from every work of the enemy including the pain in the name of jesus i give you glory I give you glory. I give you praise. I give you honor. I thank you Lord. That I am completely healed. Lump. I am speaking to you. In the name of Jesus. Dissolve from the root and disappear in the name of Jesus. 
right now. Thank you, Lord, for your fire, for your anointing. Thank you, Lord, that every yoke of the enemy is destroyed and your fire has burnt every seed that was from the kingdom of darkness and has set me free in the glorious name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Now you check your pain. Your pain is completely gone. Do what you were not able to do. I can do it. Okay. Sense whatever pain that was there. You had pain here. The swelling was there. See both the hands. The swelling is gone. Can you feel the pain? Pain is not there. The pain is gone? Pain is not there, but swelling is there. Swelling is there? Yeah. Okay. Speak to that swelling. Put your, put, your, put your hand over there. Put your hand over there. Where the swelling is. Yeah. And say this. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. For I just learned. That Abraham, that Abraham did not stagger at the promise, not at the promise through, unbelief. through unbelief. In the same way, the same I, refuse I refuse to pay attention to, pay attention to, my, sense to my sense knowledge, but choose to believe, but choose to believe what, your says. what your word says. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The, swelling the swelling is gone. I believe it by faith. And I receive it by faith. And I, it by faith. And, I you glory. and I give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Keep saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now you touch your, your where the lump was. Is it there or gone? Still there. It is still there. Okay. Now, is that... What the senses are saying, or is it what the word is saying? saying? The senses are saying? The senses are saying? It is there. It is there. Yeah. What are you going to choose to believe? Word. Believe in the word. Believe in the word. Yeah. Okay. So if you believe in the word, can we give glory to God? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and give glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Okay, now both you you check check your swelling. There. It is there. It is? Yeah, it's still there. The swelling is there? Yeah. What about the pain? Pain not there. Okay. So, what am I going to keep my focus on? See, okay. see, see, we just learned, okay? What I say is going to give life to that. So, when I say words contradicting to what the word says, I give life to it. And I make it permanent. But when I speak words in alignment with that written word, I give life and bring forth that healing which is already on the inside of me to the outside. Okay? So just as how God set you free from that pain, 
completely in the same way you continue to give glory to god that that swelling which is there is completely gone also the allergy that you get with different kinds of food that you eat when god created the fruits and vegetables he created it to be good he did not create it to have allergy okay so from today onwards everything that you eat or drink you must agree with what the word says and the word says that my food and my grain and my water is blessed okay so so you have to hold on to what his promise says and not waver through unbelief but every single time give glory to god every time you eat anything that you are allergic to and start saying god i give you glory and i thank you that you've blessed my food and you've blessed my water and this food and water brings nourishment to my body praise the lord okay this has shrunk still okay sir okay yeah. little it little like a it it was in the beginning to what it is now has it reduced i think a little bit not too much ah. okay okay uh, uh, please understand sit down sister please understand the word works like a seed okay when i take the word and i plant it by speaking it this word has to grow and the seed which is an incorruptible seed cannot fail in any way because the word of god is an un, is an incorruptible seed when it is planted and when you're watering it when you are manuring it when you're giving glory to god for it this seed brings forth the harvest so from today your confession of faith should be what to believe in the word of god to believe in the word of god the word of god says that by his wounds you are completely healed so every time you touch your hand over here and and this speaks to you you have to say you are temporary the word says that by his wounds i am completely healed so give glory to god every day and say thank you jesus that this is completely healed it has shrunk from what it was it was very tight right now now it is not it is not tight praise god hallelujah you know what just happened this is not something that happens once in a while this is a lifestyle this has to become a lifestyle when you and i a child of god when we walk in authority every demon in hell has to bow but when will that enemy bow only when i understand my authority and exercise it hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus so is it easy or difficult uh, you know if you want to learn more about this topic okay on how to walk in the supernatural and if you want to learn more about the authority that god has given you and all the inheritance that you have connect on the youtube every day on jcilm.info there are teachings that has been taken there are recorded teachings there are testimonies that you can learn from practically and use it in your day to day life Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Shall we all give a big round of applause to Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, let's all just yeah. Thank you. Let's all just stand up and
all those who are watching online wherever you are and whatever situation you might be in let's all come into this moment of prayer remember that god is not distant from us we have made ourselves distant from god we thank you father we thank you lord we thank you for every single person who is in this room right now and for every single person that is watching us right now wherever you are the lord's eyes are upon you because his word says the lord's eyes are upon his righteous and he keeps them from the wicked one we thank you and we praise you father for this time of teaching this preaching what you have given us lord today what we have seen what we have witnessed is a taste that you've given us the full meal is waiting for us to be partaken of i thank you father for the anointing that is upon each and every single person here even as you are watching the spirit of god is speaking to you personally and showing you all those areas in your life where you have been believing for a breakthrough you have been believing for a tremendous change and this change has not come about till now and years have gone by and you might be still wondering lord where am i going wrong what is it that i am missing out on today the lord is telling to each one of us he has given us his word he has given us his resource he has given us his spirit the holy spirit dwelling in each one of us 24 by 7 longing to have fellowship with us the holy spirit desires to have fellowship with us helping us to walk in the supernatural and today as a child of god and the authority that you have given to me lord i take authority over every demonic spirit of unbelief that is obstructing your people from walking in faith from walking on the word on the supernatural that you have destined for them i take you captive you spirit of unbelief and i bind you in the name of jesus and i cast you out of their lives right now thank you father that as your people respond to what you have done for them through the faith that you have empowered them with thank you lord that every block that was there for so long in their lives that blockage have been re removed completely in the name of jesus thank you for breakthroughs thank you lord for the anointing that has empowered them to step out into the uncomfortable places and become witnesses of your glory witnesses of your love witnesses of your joy to all those who are broken to all those who are longing for your love thank you lord for each of these people the blessing that you have poured out into their lives not only they are blessed but their generations are blessed and the same people lord are walking into the lives of all your other children who are still far away from the fold thank you that the spirit of god is working with them giving them the knowledge giving them the understanding to stand on your word and to walk on the supernatural just as peter walked on the water at that one word come when you said here we are lord we repent of all the times we repent of all the opportunities that we have missed so far but no more missing going forward 
We thank you and we praise you, Lord, for healing, healing of the body. Thank you, Lord, for the healing of the soul that is taking place right now. So many of you are struggling with the battle in your mind, not able to understand how to captivate all the thoughts, the negative thoughts that is coming, that is burdening you. The only way, my brother, the only way to take these thoughts into captivity is to keep your mind stayed on the word. The word of God is the sword, is that net which takes into captivity every false lie, every accusation of the devil, every thought that contradicts the written word of God, takes it into captivity and brings it to obey Christ. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that your presence is dwelling in each one of us. And the more we consider your word every single moment of our lives, every mountain in our lives melts like wax in your presence. We thank you. We praise you, Father, that your ears are always attentive to our prayers. We thank you, Lord, that you have not only heard us tonight, but you have also empowered us with your grace through the knowledge of your Son, that as we tap into this knowledge, we receive all that you have promised us. And what you have promised us, we mix our faith with it and receive the supernatural manifestation of your glory every single day of our lives. We give you all the glory, we give you all honor, and we give you all praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.